Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today, me and Ben have got a big collaboration day. A little bit in the dark on some of this because he's given me a piece of wood, and I want you to turn me a real simple plate-type bowl. So that's my, my aim, okay? Then Ben's going to take over, and he's going to decorate it, ready for Christmas. So what have we got? Piece of sycamore. This is about seven-inch diameter, inch thick. I've skimmed the surface to make it a bit easier. We've recessed it. Why do I want to do that? Because it just means we can go straight onto the O'Donnell jaws, load it, and expand that out. So let's just get, I think, Cohen, let's just have a look on Frey a minute. That, let's just see and get it there. So, so simple to do. No screw check, no screws. No worry about how deep things go in. All those little things play a part. Let's just run it up and see where we are. We're pretty equal. A little bit I can see one side. So slacken it, turn it, let's do it back up. That'll be good. So simple little plate. All right, like I said, we've got to push time a little bit than this. So glasses, lost them. So let's get my gouge. All right, so we're going to use standard bowl gouge. Ben's just going to get my safety glass. I think they're on my desk. Look. So we're going to use standard bowl gouge, 55 degree bevel. Okay, sharpen with tip. I'm going to make bags. All right. So I've got so, finger and thumb, left hand, so important. At the moment, I can make contact just with the bevel. Flute is facing me directly. I can roll it. I'm going to push across. Now, as much as we cut it to a circle, we're not 100% round. Left thumb's doing all the work at the moment. Now pushing it across. Right hand follows. As we said, real simple little thing, this. Down to a cylinder. Getting a little bit bounced right hand side. But I know there's a bark insertion. Fingertip on the top. Nice and clean there. That's good. Got to come round to the front. Into the hair. Want to roughly find our middle. Set dividers. I've set out a measurement that I want. Now, we're going to explain this a little bit as well in a second. But let's just double check. I want to be able to grip internal. So with the Okay, so I'm just checking off the chuck jaws, set of dividers. They've gone with quite a large set of chuck jaws. These are a set of A+. plus. Going to produce a big, heavy, tight foot in reality, quite a big diameter. But that's actually going to add stability for what we're trying to do with this project so it doesn't fall over. If we did a recess and expand it into, so a mortise, if you like, some of you will call that, okay? I'm going to have a little weak rim around the edge. I've also, if you like, put a recess in the bottom of the bow, which gives me more risk of joining the funnel club when we hollow the other side. So it could be nice just to do quite a large, solid foot. Uh, I want to come into there, mark a circle. That gives me a guide. Just going to get parting tool onto there. Just to create a break line. Bow gouge. We're going to do pull cut. So left hand over the top, coming out. Yeah, a little bit more. So I can come back over to that wall now. Flutes right on its side. That'd be good. How about we start to do a bit of shape? So we're going to break around. And we want real simple shape for this. Well, again, we're just doing that full count. We've got the hand around, left hand over the top, allowing more movement for my left arm. Okay. Now that's going to leave us a little bit of a rough finish. We've rusted the bevel now. So into there, I can drop the handle down, get as near as I can. So drive with the tip. And again, just bring it up. And my hand on needs to come round. Just a bug out. I'm monitoring the far side what's going on. Not too bad. Got a change of direction just there. Not bad. Just going to refine that very lightly. Do a weird and wonderful thing. So, oval skew. I can share scrape. 
And yeah, I know I go against those grain fibers. Look at what we're getting off. Slightly cleaner finish. Let's come back round. That looks good. We've got our foot that we set a bit. Not loads to hold on. We can square that up. Or in reality, do a bit. We've got a dovetail shape on our foot. On the chuck doors, we just need to get a little bit in under here. Produce a little bit of a dovetail shape. Now, just that time our plate needs to sit flat, we're going to dish out a little bit of the middle. So I'm working to the centre. Tip of the gouge. Left hand pushing along the toe rest. I can now turn over. Just going to come back. Almost blend that in. So create that little step. Just going to level off that top. Ooh, my scraper needs to sharpen. So this is slightly hollow. But our shape. I said real simple shape. All right. It'll be apparent why when we do the other half. So now we've got to do a bit of sanding. So we need to do that one there. Just putting the air on for the extractor. This is 150. 240. A bit of 400. Let's grab those. We can tear these up down here. It's all rested out the way. Not too much speed. Gently pull it round and do a hollow. So a bit like you'd have on a traditional plate. Slightly hollowing underneath. Let's have a quick look. Shouldn't take a lot of sanding. Fingertips, what's happening in there? I've got right in that corner edge. Should be good. Two, four. Then we want a little bit of 400. Nice thing. 400 grit. Little pad sander. That looks good. Now, before we do anything else, and this is the luxury maybe of having two chucks, isn't it? Let's test where our foot's going to grip. Make sure on there, we've got it right, got the right size. Again, worth doing if you're putting in your recess. You check it fits. There's nothing worse than going to reverse it and find it doesn't hold on there. So, take that out. Take our chuck up. Turn it round. So quite a big diameter as we said as a foot. Just checking things line up. Pretty good. I'm just going to tweak it that way. Get on. Got to go a bit careful. I've got a sharp edge on the top of the rim. So sensible thing for that. 
just to soften it. So a little bit of abrasive paper, take that sharp corner off. So now we can hollow this. I'm going to start out near the rim. Fingertips getting an idea of what's going on. In a second, we get a set of calipers in. So just setting them up, give me a gap. Feel what's going on. Work on that stage. Not going mega thin with this. I can use the calipers. I'm monitoring the gap I've got, left hand side. So I can move them, can further down, doesn't move as much, so we know it's getting thicker. We want to try and keep it equal. So I'll do the same again. Make our cut, bring it round, have a quick look. On. Check our gap there. I can wind them in a little bit if you've got a big gap there. Okay. Still getting that a little bit thicker. So we rest the bevel gently, raise the handle, we find our cut, and that's good. So knock some bulk out. Getting down to where we need to be. Land the back of the gouge first. Gently up with the handle. Press the bevel. Drive it across. Again, short stage. See what's going on. Testing our thickness, getting a little bit thicker as we come down. Feels good. Touch the calipers. Now at this stage, and this is weird. Now this is a piece of air dried sycamore. We're getting a bit of bounce. And I'll tell you, this is one of these common questions. Do you just watch me cut it? It was nice and clean. So why are we getting that bounce? The grain's starting to shrink across the grain. Wood fibers are reacting to what we take it out. So actually, this has come in a little bit, and grain will be slightly longer. So it can cause quite a lot of issues. Even at this stage now, I could actually sand this, try and maintain my equal thickness, because when I take the middle out, we're going to lose more. So 150 grit. At the band, we'd have a bit of a rolled rim, so let's just blend this in with the abrasive. If I go with the chisel, probably a bit thin there now. We run the risk we splinter that short grain section off down the grain. Gonna roll that over. So, a 150 at this stage, just helping us keep our thickness and make sure it looks equal. One five, do a little bit on the two four. I'm blending in around that edge, create that rolled edge. Well, it's good. Done those two grades, that's nice and easy. So next little bit, land the back of the gouge. Gently up. So I can push across. down to where I need to be. I'm going to try checking the shape. Good. Next little bit in the middle. Bring my body round, now take this flute a bit more upright. Now feeling what's going on down the handle. Fingertips now, what's happening here? We're coming up in the middle a little bit. So I need to have a quick feel. I'll come back a bit. 
nice and lightly. Left arm's doing quite a bit of work here again, pushing it across. Right arm's got to follow slowly to the middle. Raise or lower that handle so we can hit that centre bit. Okay, that looks quite good. Real simple play. Nothing difficult. Most of you should be able to, hopefully, with how you've been tuning in, be able to do these. These are quite simple. So I've got a sound again. So 150, two rafters out the way. Fingertips just adding a little bit of support. Study me as well, as much as anything. Working out to where we've got that line where we've already sanded. I can see where I've done up to. We're going to creep up in a minute. See what's going on. So one five. Our two four. Keep the abrasive moving. It's amazing how much this edge moved while we followed it. Four hundred. Blend things in. Let's have a look. That is quite good. Rotary sand on the four hundred. Double things up. little bit of the shortest and the shavings off of there if we can just burnish that now we're not going to put a polish on this okay so that looks quite good on there let's have a quick look on here where are we we go to overhead cohen so probably three right? real simple little dish as i said big foot that's a lot of strength it's amazing, though, when we're actually hollowing this, how much things are starting to move, shrink across the grain, get the unequal nature on the side of the bowl if you if you sand it all at the end. So maybe by sanding the stages will be better. Real simple little thing, though, okay? So let's just move a few things about. I've got to pack a few things out of the way. All right. Let me bring this in. Okay, we grab that. All right, going to move that in there. Now, I expect from there, if I get them out of the way from there, Ben can come and do his bit. Okay, everybody. So while they're just changing over their mics and everything, I just thought I'd do um, a little shout-out to everybody that's here today. It's Colin, by the way, everyone. Hello. Um, so we've got people from all over. We've got a lot of Brits, and we've got a lot of Americans. We've even got Norway saying hello. So we've got a James Pritchard. We've got... Um, we've got Cliff Boren in, so we've got Philip Blarney, Randy Rockwell, Sleeping Dog. Uh, we've got Robert Richards, Jim B, Maria in Wells, Adrian Olsen, um, Sleeping Dog. Who else have we got? Goran Brems, that and all Norway, yes. I hope I said that right, Goran, sorry. Uh, Frederick Day, all the way. I think you're sorry, aren't you? Uh, I know Sittingbourne area. Um, who else have we got? Robert Richards. I'm sorry if I keep repeating your names. Uh, from Pontypool, uh, Sleeping Dog, I've said you already, Sleeping Dog, Mark Edwards, we've got, who else, Bob P from Virginia, Ward, Ward Wilson from Arizona, um, I think we're getting there, I think we're getting there, that's every, oh, Michael, Michael McEwen, yeah, uh, is that Canada, wow, okay, so, oh, Wayne Nic Nicolef from Canada, and I think we're there, Len Breckwell, Joe, Gorof, hello. Sorry, I'm awful at these pronunciations. 
and Mark Edward. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Right, we're going to hand you back now to to a very acrobatic Ben and uh, to do his bit. So here he is. Hello, you lovely lot. Thanks for that. That was uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, so as you can hear, we've got Colin on questions. Um, so any questions, just um, pop them in the chat. There, we'll do our best to answer them. You know, we've got Col uh, questions for me or uh, Colin, Jason. Um, we're all here today. <clears throat> Um, so a little bit of pyro on this and a really kind of little simple um, job that we're going to do. Um, I've got my little Antex, or not little really, it's uh, my Antex fire writer here. So this is the, the bit of kit I'm going to be using. Um, little pyro pen. And I've got a couple pens today. I've got a couple tips that I'm going to be using. This is a little sharp one. Um, and I've also got round wire, which is good for your kind of writing and stuff. First things first, I've just printed off, because I've got awful handwriting, I've printed off Dear Santa and Rudolph. So this is going to um, be on here. And I'm just going to pop that at the top. But, you know, these designs, um, you know, put them where you like. This could be central and you could have your bits around it. Um, I just wanted it at the top here to give me a bit of room to, to mess around a bit further down. Bit of carbon paper, all right, or graphite paper will do the same job. Um, shiny side down, I'm going to use that kind of wax or um, a kind of waxy side down. And then we're just going to go over the top with a pen. So really easy. Dear Santa, and I kind of picked a quite kind of scrolly font for it, and I'm trying to follow those nice kind of curves and waves in the writing. Lovely to hear all your names there. That was nice, that Colin. I think we should do that more often. Do the roll call. Um, Nice to see all you regulars. It's nice to see all the Brits saying how cold it is, and then we go over to Texas <laughs> yeah. and Colorado and places <laughs> like that. It's probably a little bit warmer it than it is. It's too hot. Yeah. It is having that um, kind of international audience. When we when we first sign on, we'd like to see how the weather is in all the different areas. So I think I'm going to come in a bit closer on that. Just up on my stool here. Let's come in a bit closer. Oh, sorry, put my finger in the way. And we've got a bit of an upside down view. Um, so first pen I'm gonna use is gonna be just a round wire type. So this is the type of wire, the nichrome wire um, that you get, um, well, we get a set free with the, or not free, you're paying for it, but um, a set in, with the Antex machine when you get it of different thicknesses. And quite often, I will just um, make my own tips. <clears throat> you can buy this stuff on reels and rolls as well. Um, so it's just a, a bit of bent wire um, in that kind of U shape on there. But it is round wire. I haven't flattened it or sharpened it or anything like that. And what that's going to do is allow me to burn quite freely on the surface there's lots of changes of direction um, when you're doing writing. Um, so this type of tip is what you really want to go for. If you're doing quite blocky stuff, I would go back to my kind of sharper tip. Ooh, a bit hot, that. I'm just going to bring, dial that back a little. And what I've got used to doing is just slightly cooling down the tip before you get started because once you get going the um the timber starts to kind of take some of that heat out of it so i tend to cool it down just by blowing on it and then we can start to follow our shapes 
But how about that? A little plate turned in 20 minutes. We'll have 50 more of these, please. I think he was taking his time, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> was he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So really quick and easy, this is just like writing with a pen. This um, piece of sycamore is really smooth. It's like silk, um, really stable across the grain. So you don't get that kind of crazy fast summer growth. And then the really kind of hard, um, you know, annual rings in the winter. It's really stable across the grain. And that's what you kind of want for this type of... Um, for for writing on a piece of timber otherwise you're kind of skipping across the grain and it dips in here and there and you'll get lots of little blobs so there's a couple of timbers i really recommend when you're doing this type of job and that would be uh, sycamore and also um things like lime are really good Um, and you can burn any wood, but, um, you know, this is going to give you just that bit better results. Okay, so dear Santa and Rudolph, we've made a start. Really simple, easy thing to do. So we've got a question. We have. Here's one. Do you, would you be replaced by a, um, a machine, do you think, uh, Ben? The question is, <laughs> yeah. um, could a CNC laser accommodate the curvature on that plate? as well as you could? That is a good question. Um, as soon as you start using something that's um, kind of coming in a, in a line, when we start hitting convex and concave curves, it warps. So um, imagine like a game of rugby when you see the kind of um, sponsors thing, and you know that camera angle's coming in at a funny angle, um, but it looks straight and neat on screen. Um, so this is the same sort of thing. As soon as you start kind of bending the, the shape, um, it, it will, um, you know, it will warp a little bit. Saying that, there's not as too much shape on here. So I probably could be easily replaced by a, a laser. Um, but you miss out on that kind of handcrafted thing. And those things scorch like anything as well. So... You could replace me with a laser, but it's not going to be as good. It's not as nice, is it? <laughs> no. A little, so the fact that all three of us are in the shop today, there's been a bit of a, a comparison um, and uh, to, to three, well, no, there hasn't been a comparison to three wise men. Uh, three wise monkeys, apparently, <laughs> Robert was saying, and then Maria's come up with three wise king penguins. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, and there is no competition between me and Jason at all. Um, I always win. <laughs> Because I've got the microphone. What are you like? Okay, so we're gonna, we are going to mark out a little area for a mince pie and a glass. Um, and also we've got a carrot to put on there. So we've got a mince pie for, um, for Santa, for his little snack. Um, we've got a carrot for Rudolph and then a little drink. Um, some people have milk and cookies. Um, so, you know... Mix it up, put what you like on there. Um, but, you know, similar kind of uh, thing we're doing for each. Um, okay, and the way I've done it is like a couple of little eyeballs and a, um, and a, and a mouth with the carrot. Um, not by design at first, but that's the way it came out. So I'm using, I don't know what this is. This is like a little... Um, kind of round bit that the guys have turned. I've just pinched it off the shelf because I thought it was the right size. So we've got one of these. So we've got another question. Yeah, just a, a quick one here. So um, yeah, Philip Blani is just asking, how many burner tip shapes are there? Is it similar to calligraphy pens? There are zillions. If you look on um, like a company like Razor Tip, um, there are loads out there. Some of them are specific for a little job. So you'll get one that will just do kind of lots of little straight lines, like a feathering type tip. You can have texturing tips. You can have brands. Um, there's loads out there. To be perfectly honest, I only use about two or three. Um, I use my round wire 
um, different thicknesses of though. Um, I use a sharp tip, but pretty much about 90% of the things that I do are all done with that sharp tip. Um, and they, um, and yeah, you can use that in different ways. It's quite a versatile one. Um, but yeah, loads on the market. Check out Razor Tips uh, webpage and you'll just see how many different chisel, like kind of chisel tips, because people will use this for carving. Um, texture on walking sticks, on um, for, for like furs and feathers. Um, so it's not just for kind of burning. Um, you can create really good textures and stuff with it as well. So I'm just swapping my pen over. So I'm getting my round tip into a sharp tip. Probably not very easy to see, but it's just flattened on the end there um, and really kind of fine up on edge. So it's almost like using an, uh, a scalpel. So fire right has gone back on. And what I'm going to do, you know, those they kind of put the cutouts or like almost like a shadow board. We're going to do lots of little lines just coming around like this. When you change tips, worth just having a little play with the temperature. I'm having to bring the temperature up slightly so that um, I get the kind of burn that I want. And you can see how fine that little line is. Ooh, let's come back a bit. There we go, that's a bit more comfortable there. Um, so I'm just sat at the lathe doing this. Um, you know, normally Jason would, you know, if, if he was to turn this, um, we'd just give it to me and I'll do it on the bench. But with all the cameras set up, we just thought, why not just do it at the lathe? But of course, if you're using heat um, and there's loose shavings or dust around, of course, just be extra, extra careful. of your kind of surroundings really we don't want to put this down and it be sat in some shavings even if you've turned it off um, that kind of residual heat will still cause a little problem or or a big one <laughs> so you kind of get the idea where we're going with this this is going to be a little cut out or not cut out, it's a, a little dotted line to represent a mince pie or a, or a glass, something like that. Sometimes coming up to the last one, you might need to sort of play with the spacings or the length of the, the last couple of little dots. Um, just so it looks, you know, like there's a constant gap all the way around. But easy peasy, lots of little lines with a, with a sharp tip. And you can see the difference in the thickness of the line. If I was to use the, um, the round tip, we would have much thicker um, lines on this. And this one's really good as well because it kind of cuts in. So it, cuts, it burns beneath the surface. So you can use something like a pencil eraser just to get rid of the worst of that um, that carbon paper and any kind of traces that we were cheating. So let's get rid of that. So same sort of thing on here. Um, that's going to be that one's going to be for Santa's little tipple, his uh, his drink. I think I'm just going to draw a little star on here. It's going to be the top of the mince pie. So I'm just freehanding a little star here. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, because this is pastry. This is no longer a, a piece of wood. This is a crinkly old bit of pastry. And that'll do for me. We're gonna burn that in too. Same sort of deal. 
lots of little um, swipes. I'm going to come back a bit. So it doesn't take long for these wire type um, pyrography tips to, to heat up. A matter of seconds and we're back in the game. Burning our little our little lines. Granted, this one is a little bit wonky, but um, forgive me. And I'll ask Jason to turn this. Because if I was to turn it, we'd still be on the foot now. <laughs> Just <trying> to, <laughs> to get it right. Um, so get one of these guys in. And um, yeah, jobs are good and really, isn't it? Okay, so little star, we're making a almost like a little um, what do you call them? The the um, the boards where you get your put your hammers and your chisels up and you get the outlines of them. So it's a little representation. Shadow board is the thing I'm looking for. All right, so we've got a little mince pie there. Um, we've got another circle. And then, so I did this at first, and <clears throat> it quite quickly looked like some little eyeballs. <laughs> I put my carrot um, across, a nice straight carrot across there, and it looked really like a little grumpy face. And I thought, we can't have a grumpy face at Christmas. So what I've done is I've done a little kind of... Um, a little not straight carrot, banana. a banana shaped carrot. Yeah, or you know, who's to say Rudolph doesn't like bananas? You could put a banana down the bottom, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> very traditional. But I'm just using my little pencil here, and then we're going to do almost like a crown shape so a simplified or kind of stylized carrot. Right, back in with our our burner. So, just wait for that to heat up a sec. And we can carry on. And I want to do these a little bit, you know, not in a straight line. We're going to make it a little bit wonky. Just adds to the, sh the kind of, um, kind of naive shape, I guess, like a, we don't want it too um, exact. So whizzing through it a little bit here. But it almost looks like a stitching, like a stitch. So just coming around here. And quite often, these little bowls, little platters and stuff, this is the kind of thing that gets given to me. Can you burn, you know, our golf trophy on this? Or, um, you know, someone's retirement. Plates and bowls can be a little bit of a pain because they've got a rock on them, they've got, they've got a shape on them. So something like a towel underneath, you can kind of put it in a comfortable place kick it up a little bit and, um, you know, just make things comfortable for yourself. Um, and also with this type of burn, you could mount this back on the lathe and, um, and sand it back if you wanted to get rid of those pencil marks. I find for something like this, a, a pencil eraser is going to get rid of the worst of it. And that bit where Jason was, um, you know, left the middle in and then showed how the the bowl would change shape just halfway through. I did a bowl ages ago, and there was bits, there was patches on it where I couldn't get to with the abrasive. Now I can kind of see why that's happened. The bowl's moved halfway through the turning. 
but amazing that it happened so quickly like that. Okay, so we've got, I'm not going to do this one, the, the, the one with the glass. It's more of the same. We're going round and round with those little um, kind of dots. But you can see we've got a little smiley face going on. Um, and he's got a, got a star in his eye. All right, Nicole, then? Just what, Yeah, just while you had that there. It's, it's not questions, it's just comments. It's a, a, a few people are seeing a, a cat's face in the grain of that timber. And now once you've seen it, you'll never unsee it. It's there all the time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you see, I see that? it. Yeah. There's also, here. also, that was from little... Full of Blarney. There's a few comments about carrots and bananas not being grown in Lapland. <laughs> Um, and a point that Maria made right at the beginning, are we not isolating Rudolph a little bit by only allowing him to eat off the plate? He what is. about the other uh, we, reindeer? We're going to have to go back and do a 30-inch platter to get a whole bunch of carrots on there. <laughs> so these are the kind of... Um, I've uh, The ones that I looked at online, they were a bit biased, to be, um, to be fair, Santa and Rudolph. Um, yeah, he, he always gets all the good stuff, doesn't he? He gets up the front there. I think we're going to have a, a reindeer strike to follow everything, every, <laughs> yeah, everyone that's else. That's right. Yeah, we can't be having that so close to Christmas. Sorry, okay, one so more and I'll shut up. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Wayne is just coming with, um, are you going to put a finish on this one? You done? I would put a food safe finish on this because we're going to put a mince pie on there. and We don't want Rudolph getting poorly. So a food safe finish. I would just brush that on and wipe off the excess. I wouldn't bother putting it back on the lathe and really kind of buffing it up. Um, this is a nice little thing for the kids. They're not going to be picking holes in your finish. Um, but, yeah, I can see that. That is all I can see is that cat's face now. We maybe we should have done a cat's face. I would uh, change mine. I'd put a pasty <laughs> shape and a bottle of a Guinness shape on mine now. Yeah, Santa's, Santa's changed. Santa's favourite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can mix this up, you know. If you've got your favourite snack um, that you and Santa both equally like as much, um, put that on there. But we're just going with the classics. The uh, the carrot, the mince pie. I think we used to do whiskey at ours, um, but sherry on a lot of them. Um, but yeah, there's some, some um, difference in opinion on, on Santa's favourite tipple. Um, so we've got here one of these um, Chromacraft um, pens. Um, this is a really great little thing. This is um, the Chromacraft wood die, uh, one of the Nick Agar's signature series, and this is the orange for the carrot. Um, and I'm just going to draw a line. You could fill the whole thing, but I'm just going to draw a line. I've got the jitters a bit today, so a bit of a wonky hand. So we're just representing that color on there, really. Um, you could fill the whole thing. Um, a bit of the olive green, it's quite a dark green that's gonna go on the, um, the carrot tops up here. But how easy is that? Instead of getting all my mucky spirit stains out and brushes and all that business and getting straight into it with a with what's really like a big um, chisel tip felt tip fantastic um and i'm going to do some little kind of um i guess sultanas or currents or something just some little rounds of the the brown there just rotate the plate you could put some yellows on here for the pastry. I think on my other one, I did another little circle on the inside to sort of show the rim of the, the pastry case. But we're fighting the, fighting the time here. So that's my kind of representation of this pie. It's going to look a lot better to get the actual mince pie on there. Okay, so another question. So I'm going to be serious just for this one. Mm -hmm. um, so full of on it, I'm going to have to research your question about the outgassing. Um, and I'll come back to you on that one because I honestly don't know off the top of my head. So I'll find out for you. Um, and Cliff is just asking, on the bottom of the plate, 
There were some darker markings. Sorry, mm -hmm. on the bottom rim of the plate there. Yeah. There's some darker markings below the carrot. He was just wondering, does that come from the um, the paper that you used? Or no, is no. it naturally in there? Or? That's in the timber. So um, there's some sort of water marking where probably the, the end of the um, board's been sat on the ground or something like that. And it's just kind of pulled a, a bit of water up through the capillaries in the, in the timber. Um, so we've got some kind of dark, almost looks like he's got a little beard going on. Um, but yeah, there's some really nice, um, really nice markings in this. Um, and actually, the annual rings are a little bit darker. They must have picked something up because um, usually sycamore is just that lovely uh, kind of creamy white. Not to say that this isn't lovely. Um, you also get these lovely markings um, and all sorts of stuff going on. But there's um, there was a little pippy bit right um, right in the S of the Santa. So quite often you get little markings and stuff in the wood um oh that's just a bit of a bit off of the rubber but yeah look at that really really pretty and actually i've done some really nice big pyrography pieces a big heron i did in the past that had some lovely markings going all the way through it and um you know you can you know if you're doing pyrography you can quite often exploit those uh, natural colors and stuff in the timbers um, to give you a really nice scene um, without with you know doing less work it's it's picking out uh, the natural things in the timber um so we could go around this i think actually we've got time we've got time but let's um let's just get this in a in a spot where we can see what's going on and jason's standing ready with a mince pie he's <laughs> got oh, thank you so we've got our mince pie here. We've got a really lovely fresh carrot that's come out of, um, I think, come out of your garden, didn't it, Jace? And it's got that little curve to it already. And then a little, a little glass there. And there we got it, little Santa's, Santa's plate. Okay, ready to leave out for Christmas Eve. Um, and this is a really nice, fun thing to do uh, for the kids. If you wanted a bigger glass, we got another one here. What have we got here, Jason? <laughs> oh, and, uh, <laughs> it depends what you're having, really, doesn't it? I think, what's that for, Jason? That's some nice cut glass there, a bit of crystal. But, yeah. So that's our little Santa's plate. Really easy thing to, um, you know, to add decoration to these little um, little plates or platters um, try to not put too much shape on it so you want a nice flat area to um, to work on for your pyro if you wanted to decorate it um, but otherwise yeah that's that's pretty much it in it Jace any more to add I think I got the easy task <laughs> yeah you got the easy bit um, but you know it's, it, we specialize in our different things it's for me the easy bits the pyro for Jason the easy bits the turning so you know, bring skills together and, um, you know, you can make really nice little things and quite quickly, really. We whiz that out. What we have 48 minutes we've got on the clock here. Um, so yeah, we can make a few more before Christmas. Have one each. <laughs> Everybody makes one. Really, I'm just going to get fat. <laughs> no. Well, carrots are very low fat. They're good for you. And, um, he's going to have brilliant night vision, um, for coming around on Christmas Eve. Um, if you believe in <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, well, that's about it for today. All thank right. you all very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and um, and a, a, you know follow and subscribe, all that stuff. Um, and we'll see you again very soon for more woodworking wisdoms.